Members, we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will get going. Uh, members, I'd like to open the special meeting for Monday, the 23rd of March 2020. Uh, this council meeting will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and Facebook page. A recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be present with us today. Uh, there are no apologies or leaves of absence. Um, that takes us to item 3.1 for your consideration. Which I don't have in front of me. There we go. Uh, I might have to scroll up a little bit further. Uh, now, do we have printouts of this, members? I think we do. Um, members, I'm going to have to take them in parts. Councillor Canole. Um, and the material conflict of interest you need to state? Adelaide Central Market. Thank you. Um, so we can actually perhaps do that part as a standalone, which allows you to then vote on the rest of it. So you don't have to leave unless you have to leave. Um, so in terms of that conflict, what we might do is just do the rest of part three with that as an exception and then do that after you've uh, left the room. Uh, so members, before you, you have a recommendation um, that notes the ongoing work, notes the audit committee's support and then authorises a number of uh, response responses to COVID-19. I will look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a second. Oh, and a seconder, uh, Councillor Aprahimzade. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Aprahimzade. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Ah, oh, okay. I didn't see whose hand up was first, so I'm sorry, um, Councillor Kerr. I saw your hand up as well. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Sims? Um, we, at the moment, we are debating the motion. Um, so if I can actually, if we can perhaps, um, what I might do is take the central market. Um, could I make that point four? So that we just, Councillor Martin. Oh, and the Ronald Mall as well. Um, okay, let us then debate points one and two first, and we will get to point three in a moment. Okay, members, any debate on points one and two? Councillor Martin. It's a special meeting, but I'm happy if you sit and I'm not sure that the microphones are actually working, so I can't hear you. Let me just find out what's happening with the operator. No. Do I need, is there a button to push? Yes, 
Oh, this is a wonderful opportunity if I'm allowed to continue to talk. Uh, well, there's a microphone check. I still on. have a time, <laughs> Councillor Martin. The time still starts now. Well, uh, I'll, wait listen to that. I'll wait until the microphone it is, is ready. Thank you very much. Um, look, it, it, as I understand it, Lord Mayor, you're seeking a comment with regard to this motion in respect of one, and I'm assuming uh, in respect of one, two, and three, which precede the measures there. Is that correct? Correct. So at the moment, sorry, sorry, Councillor Martin, I'm just going to debate on one and two, and then we'll take three as a separate part. And three includes all of the issues associated with it? Correct. Thank oh, you are you that. putting them as separate things now? So, um, Sorry, I'll just wait to see what's going on here. So, Rudy, from a governance point of view, we can do points one and two, and then for point three, Councillor Canole will have to leave the room if we're going to do it as a whole. Is that correct? Okay. So, let's continue on one and two, and then we'll get to point three. And we are able to speak on each of those things, that is, on one and two, and then separately on three? Correct. Thank you. Um, look, uh, may I just acknowledge uh, the role of the Audit Committee in continuing to support Council and uh, to advise it by uh, uh, reviewing our risk management and financial position. But I, I do ask that Council bears in mind that the Audit Committee is a post-event uh, management tool. It reviews what we've done and the risk management, the best financial practice, is up to the Council, not the Audit Committee. The Audit Committee is a great tool. It does provide us with direction, but fiscal responsibility starts here, not with the Audit Committee. Thank you. I think that's actually captured in point two, that they are reviewing and advising, but they are certainly not making decisions. The Council makes the decisions. I understand that. That's why. Thank you. Members, is there any more discussion on points one and two? Councillor Moran? Um, yes, look, are we getting any, any uh, I understand that the, um, the administration is very knowledgeable about things, but in this situation, uh, Phil's, Phil, uh, Councillor Martin's quite right, the audit committee, the word audit means after, comes after, you audit what's happened and then you report back. So it's not, it's not a financial advisor for the council. Um, so are we going to go outside the council and ask for financial um, advice on how to uh, steer through this? Because I've never been on a council that's ever exceeded its prudential limit. This council is in poor financial position um, and some very big projects. This, we could not be any worse financially positioned for this at the moment. And I think it needs some very, very high level advice and, and direction and to rely on the audit committee is, is a nonsense. So I can ask you, um, CEO, are we going to seek um, some expert outside financial advice? CEO? Just to clarify, you mean with regard to this incident? With regard to how we deal financially with the COVID-19 crisis. Yep, through you, Lord Mayor. Look, we're doing a lot of work with our financial analysis of what's occurring. Um, certainly, if we think we need to get external advice, we will do so. We're currently working with two separate entities in our financial team, and they're certainly doing some good work at the moment. I'm confident that when we come back to you with any information, that it will be accurate. So, are we, when you said two separate entities, who, yep. who might they be? I might ask Claire Moffat to come forward just to explain what we're doing. Just but while she comes along, uh, we're doing some work internally, as we have been prior to this incident occurring, um, which is helping us to yes, reform yeah. our financial... I mean, of process. course, we all know this is first and foremost a humanitarian health crisis. Um, but secondly, as I said, the council is, is not robust financially at the moment. We don't have deep pockets. We're not debt free. Um, so we don't want to bankrupt this council. Um, on what my, I, I assume that this will only be three or four months, that this isn't going to be into next year by the look of the other countries. However, um, are we getting any actuarial advice? Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Is that working? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, right. yes that's working. Uh, through the presiding member, yes, we are. There are a couple of pieces of work that have been underway. Uh, one is um, our long term financial plan. So, uh, as Council will be aware, there's a legal requirement to financially plan for 10 years. Uh, work has been underway to review that. We have had feedback from our audit committee. Um, either in, I think it was February or before Christmas, that that piece of work needed to happen and that is underway. Um, and that is being um, done by an external um, company in conjunction with our team. It's also um, picking up what um, you know good practice looks like in other councils in relation to how they um, long-term uh, plan their finances, so that's underway. There's also been a piece of work underway in relation to our financial indicators. So that's another tool and mechanism uh, that we use, um, that we have been reporting through to you for quite some time, uh, just to make sure that um, that information is um, provided to council members in a way that's easy to understand. Um, and also in relation to how we uh, report on a quarterly basis to council. So at the moment, council members receive um, detailed uh, reports um, with quite substantial attachments. Uh, we're looking at how we can um, make sure that what we provide um, council members um, gives you the information you need to make sure that you're making fully informed decisions when it comes to impact on our finances. So that work is also underway and is um, being supported by um, an external group. Uh, thank you, Kate. Just to can, uh Finish. Are we debating this now? Yeah, we are. Um, look, I'm happy to support this. I mean, it's obviously sensible. Um, there's nothing that you could disagree with one and two. Um, however, I would like to see professional actuarial um, projections to accompany things like rate freezes, um, loosening up of basically what, what this motion is asking us to do is to remove all our income or put all our income in jeopardy and net not change one major project. Now, I want to, we've got two actuaries in the state, possibly three. I, I would like Claire to have told me that one of those was in our employ. I gather not. Um, we could go to the state actuary and they would probably give us these projections under the auspices of the state government. But we need to know, what does that mean for us? What does it mean when we loosen up our we stop our rates. What does it mean? That, that, that is not in the information that we've got and it makes it very hard. Next meeting, I hope we have one in a week um, because the situation will change quickly. I would like to see those hard figures down there because we're a business run with public money and it is not our money to just um, uh, spend as we want. We have to be much more careful than a, than a private business. So I'm happy to, to vo vo vote for these, vote for all of them, but I am nervous about our financial position. I'm nervous about the lack of detail. I'm nervous about the rather woolly way that, that we'll be kept informed. I want a meeting in here every week or more often, like the state government's doing. Um, we can't just waft off and go to Zoom and things like that and leave it to the CEO. This is our business, so I, I want a lot more sh sharp figures next time we sit down. Zoom is, um, Councillor Moran, Zoom is simply a way of us to actually have a meeting remotely without having yes, to sit in the that. same you know, room. I'm happy, so, I'm happy to have well, And we have been having have meetings every week with the discussion of this since actually the decisions have been made, which is why we call this meeting forward. And there has already been an undertaking by the CEO that we will continue to meet as things I understand that, uh, Lord Mayor, that's great, but I notice that next week we have no meeting <coughs> scheduled. So I would ask you that we do meet in whichever way we can meet in a decision making inform and information meeting next week, every week until this crisis is over. How we do it is entirely up to you. This seems reasonably safe, but it may get worse. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Men members, is there any other discussion? So. Uh, Rudy, we'll go to the vote on parts one and two. Yep. Thank you. Members, uh, sorry, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Um, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Now. Okay, so just looking at the conflicts of interest um, 
Councillor Connell. So that would be with 3.1, 3.3, and where the Rundle Mall Authority is discussing uh, yes, which is below the, uh, the screen, and where the, the market is level 3.4. Yep. Uh, because I'm on the board and we haven't discussed anything yet. So on that basis, um, we can take it in parts and that you just are going to leave for those parts, for those parts. or do you want to leave for all of part three? For those three parts. For those three parts. Uh, so members, um, so we will take this in parts. Um, now, I'm going to have to go and move in a second for every part. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to ask for a mover and seconder for every part. So it's hands up. Thank you. Councillor Kouros uh, moved. Councillor Sims seconded. Councillor Kouros, did you want to speak to it? Councillor Sims? Yes, Lord Yes. Um, I just want to thank administration for the work that they've done on this. Um, I, I think this 100% rent free for three months for leases of council owned buildings. Um, is an excellent um, uh, innovation. It's something that will uh, support um, uh, will support um, those who are leasing from council during this time of extreme um, economic stress. Uh, we are facing unprecedented economic conditions, and I think council has a role to play as a leader in this space. And I'm hopeful that um, other businesses or um, building owners in the city look at what council is doing and if they're in a position to do so, follow our example and um, provide uh, rent relief to their tenants also um, because uh, I think everybody is going to be affected by this uh, coronavirus pandemic and um, we need us all to work together to provide the support that we can. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, I, I think our ratepayers would be uh, disturbed to know that this information, this motion was presented to the elected body uh, less than an hour ago with little information to judge its worth. Um, for my part, uh, I do not disagree with uh, the council uh, assisting businesses which are in trouble. But this is a very blunt instrument. It's not targeted in any way. It simply promises 100% rent free for three months to all council uh, lessees at a cost of $2 million. I have no idea who they are. I have no idea whether they're having trading difficulties. I know that many businesses are trading well at this time. And so it would seem to be less responsible to be handing large sums of money to organisations that don't need it, rather than targeting it in such a way that it assists those businesses in need. This council is not in a good financial position. It is likely, in my view, that our operating deficit for this financial year will be close to $30 million. It is money which will have to be borrowed on top of the enormous debt that we already have, which will ensure that we will breach our prudential limits in the coming financial year. It may well be that this kind of assistance will be required in the near future, but to be firing off both barrels without the targeted information to provide targeted support seems to me to be playing fast and loose with the Treasury. Now, I will support this um, because to do so would otherwise guarantee that we don't assist businesses in need. But I say to every member in this room, this is $2 million, $2 million. Councillor, Councillor, I think those figures that you're quoting, besides that isn't correct, um, were done in confidence and I would ask members to uh, respect the confidence of the briefing that we had previously. Well, Lord Mayor, I, I, I do um, beg to differ. I have the report that was presented to us. There was nothing in the diary which said to me it's a confidential meeting. There's uh, nothing there, in the briefing there was, paper. I'm sorry, Councillor, but that was a confidential briefing that we had previously, and those figures are to remain in confidence. Well, uh, Lord Mayor, I, that's part of our problem in this council, isn't it? All information is secret. 
Um, I, I urge uh, members to be very mindful in handing out uh, this cash at great speed that a more considered response would be a more responsible one. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, me too, that I actually agree with what Councillor Martin just said. I mean, really, I, none, of this, none of these items here on the paper that I cannot disagree with it. But I have found that, like, I have found a lot, a great portion of our, our, of our ratepayers who are really in, really in deep need help actually miss out. And without knowing the people we offer 100% rent free is really the people need help at this stage. And other than that, I mean, I just don't know whether or not this is a once of support from the council and whether or not that is a step two. Are we going to help them in the, in the near future when, whenever they need help? Last but not least, we already have so much debt. Will the council ever consider postpone some of our major pro projects to save some money to help our small business repairs? Thank you. CEO, did you wish to answer that? Yep, three, Lord Mayor. There is little doubt that we're going to need to have a close look at some of the, uh, some of the projects that we're dealing with. Um, I'll be coming back to council with a considered uh, response to our current work program, and that will is intended to identify key opportunities for savings that we can achieve in this current financial year. So I'll be coming back to you in the coming weeks with that information. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I would just say there's, there's some discussion about whether or not we need more time to consider this. I would just impress upon members um, not to make the perfect the enemy of the good here. Every uh, minute, every hour that we waste, that we prevaricate, that we think we might need to means test something or hold back support so we can get it just right, is another minute that another business closes, another 10 staff are laid off, told not to come into work. Um, uh, it's, it's another uh, mortgage or, or rent payment that can't be made. Um, so it's incumbent upon us to help the people that lease from us now. Um, this item for consideration, 100% rent free for three months for people that lease from us, is in line with what other large landlords um, have done, uh, much to their credit. Uh, to echo Councillor Sim's point, I'm glad that we can be a leader in this space. Um, and I would just say to the community at large and other landlords that to the best of their ability, they need to be considering the same thing. Everyone needs to pull together in this crisis because we want to make sure that while these businesses have their doors shut for the short term, we want to make sure that they can open them again during the recovery and after we're through this crisis. Um, that's why this is so important right now. We can't make the perfect the enemy of the good. This is important and very necessary relief. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I completely agree with what Councillor Ho has said. Um, I don't think anybody in this room will not vote for this motion, but if we fire all our guns as we are now, we don't have a war chest to help the people. Some of the businesses that we're giving rate relief to are doing well, and we are going to give them a rate relief. I would rather a f more finely grained um, response, keeping some in our back pocket so that we can give places that uh, really have failed and want to keep going. And I'm, I'm sure that we know some of those that will not fall into this category. So I think uh, Simon's assessment was quite right. We're rushing into this. We haven't got actuarial projections. Uh, this, we can still be on the front foot. It's just a matter of whether councillors will meet. We can meet in two days' time and have that information and check. We can meet every day. And possibly we should do that. So to rushing into an ill-informed shooting all our ammo in one fell swoop, often to people that do not need help, is a foolish thing. Of course we will vote for this. There isn't anything else on the table. We've only seen it for about 45 minutes. This is the way we roll. Infrequent meetings and letting the administration rule the city for most of the time and making broad sweep statements like this. It's not good enough and we will have to support it. Our, hand, our hands are tied behind our back once again. 
Council members, I will um, reiterate that we have been meeting frequently and this is the second special meeting that we have had in two weeks. Um, I do believe if councillor members are not comfortable with this, they have every right to amend it, which is our normal business. Um, so if you're not comfortable with this, Councillor Moran, I'm very happy for you to make an amendment to which you are comfortable. Can, um, I, can I answer that, Lord Mayor? I have not got enough information to amend that. That is my point. We have not been given the figures. You've just told us that the amounts that were shown in the, in the pre-briefing, indeed, we can't refer to in the debate. So our hands are well and truly tied behind our back. The only motion we can vote for is this, and I'm sure that was the intention. Councillor Kouros. Um, I actually um, agree that we're, as um, landlords, we should do everything in our power to support our tenants. Um, that is what is exactly happening out there at the moment with people losing their businesses or facing hardship. They are speaking to their landlord first, and that is what we are. We are a landlord of these premises. So whether they're suffering hardship or not, we're going to determine each business individually, is not what we should be doing right now. We should be actually actioning this exactly the same way that, we, that, that it is being actioned at the moment. And as a landlord myself of commercial property, I reach out to my tenant and offer them assistance where I can. And that's what we are. We are landlords to these premises, and we should be, as Councillor Sim said, showing leadership this way, and that's what should be happening out there. Landlords should be reaching out to their tenants and tenants should be support, taking on that support in any way that they can. And if this is what we should do as a real estate council right now, if this is stage one, then great. Let's move forward. This is moving really fast, this virus. This is hurting businesses in ways that most of you here do not know and you are not experiencing it as, as I have been. So if this is where we should be going, then great, let's move forward. Let's get to the next one and let's see what, what more we can do as a council. And that's, that's where we should be moving, speed of light, not slowly. Thank you. Um, actually, but you reserved right. That's okay. Um, sorry, Councillor Carroll. I was just checking something. Um, members, if there's any other speakers, if not, um, look. I also do uh, agree that we need to do what we can within our means. And as landlords, this is one thing that we can do fairly quickly that will actually show some leadership in this area to say that we are actually aware of what is going on and we're actually trying to help where we can. It also gives us the ability to talk to other landlords to actually ask them to also help in this instance, as some of them have already come forward and done. Um, in terms of what we do moving forward, Councillor Ho, we will of course address what we're going to do uh, moving forward, um, but those would be most likely part of a recovery package of which we are still exploring because there will be federal recovery packages and state recovery packages um, that we will also be available to uh, anybody who's in that industry once we actually get to the those um, when we are in recovery in the, the next uh, few months, we hope. Um, members, I will go to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote. This is 3.1. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, we go to 3.2. Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Sims. Yes, look, um, I, I make the same points in relation to this as I did the other issue. This is a, a good example of council leading the way. Um, I do just want to make a few comments in response to some of the statements that have been made. In most circumstances, I would totally agree with Councillor Martin in terms of you know time frames and so on. And of course, it's better to get this information sooner. But we're in the middle of a crisis, the likes of which you know we haven't seen in a hundred years. Um, it's an economic crisis, it's a health crisis, um, and all levels of government are grappling to deal with this. And um, we've seen over the weekend the um, extraordinary moves um, by the federal government in terms of announcing support for the most vulnerable members of our community, um, which I really welcome. And all levels of government, I think, are trying to deal with this challenge as best we can. Um, and so, 
yes, of course, it's always better to get this information sooner rather than later. But in this instance, we don't have that opportunity because of the nature of the issue that we're dealing with. And um, I think it's really important that we move quickly and that we send a strong message to uh, people in the city of Adelaide that we're going to do what we can to support um, and that we encourage others to do the same. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, a question for the administration. As this motion has only been in our hands for a short time, who exactly are we talking about in terms of uh, community leases of council-owned buildings. Uh, is that secret or can we know? Through you, Lord Mayor. Ian, are you able to come forward? Thanks. <laughs> I wish I, had a, I could take a photo of your grin just now, <laughs> Councillor Martin. It's priceless. Through the Lord Mayor. Um, uh, the, just a, I haven't got the full list on me, but it's a, ra a range of community sporting groups, particularly who use the parklands, uh, who are generally not-for-profit in nature. But I can provide a full list if you like. There's a raft of different sporting and recreational clubs in particular. So, uh, so this is uh, rent-free for, say, uh, uh, Prince Alfred College, uh, Poultney Grammar, those parklands lessees um, who are currently paying rent will now be exempt from paying rent. Is that correct? Yeah, we're looking at uh, all the community groups or not-for-profit groups and people who are leasing parklands for essentially for recreational purposes. Um, and one of the rationale for that for us is groups who are supplying um, sporting clubs who have paid memberships and paid fees, um, how th those sporting events are no longer being held um, and therefore we're looking to provide some leasing relief to them. May I speak, Lord Mayor? Uh, yes, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, look, again, this is the problem with what's presented to us. Um, we are proposing here to provide um, no rent for uh, the parklands, or at least no uh, rental cost for the parklands, for organisations which are uh, still functioning, still taking fees uh, for students. And I say to every parent who's paying thousands of dollars a term for their private school education for their children, um, you're still paying your fees and this council is, with a very blunt instrument, giving the school free rent of the parklands. Um, this is ill-considered. It, it really should have come to us in detail, in time to consider. Uh, I will support it for the same reason as I mentioned previously. That is to say, undoubtedly, there will be organisations that will struggle to pay their rent. But this is such a blunt instrument. We, we are uh, r robbing the ratepayers to give to the poor and the rich. Um, it, it, it seems to me to be uh, ill-considered. Thank you, members. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, thanks for letting me know that like, the council will, moving for, will keep moving forward to help our ratepayers in our deceptions. But let's, I mean, I urge members do not please do not under, underestimate the impacts we have. Instead of talking about recovery, I think we'd rather talk about survival. If all the small businesses are dead, there's no, we don't need to talk about recovery. And one more thing I'd like to mention though, understand the council as an organization is also in a very, very difficult moment. But let's not forget, we are still much stronger than our ratepayers. We are still much stronger than our small business members. We, have, we, have, we still have much better borrowing powers and we have got a lot more assets. Let's not forget, they are really need help. They really need help. We can't afford to let, we can't afford to let our small business just die over. We don't know how long the crisis will last for. We need to have plans. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wanted to clarify, does a community lease cover universities? I'd have to check that with our leasing no. people, but I, my understanding is that some universities have been leasing some parts of the parkland, but I'd have to double check. Right. Look, on that basis, out of an abundance of caution, I will declare a, a conflict of interest. Um, University of Adelaide is my employer, and I will leave the room. 
we'll call you back when we get to the next. Was need the seconder? Yes, I need another seconder, uh, members. So thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak a second? Okay. Um, members, if there are no further speakers, I will go back to the mover to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, if I could ask Councillor Sims to, thank you, Ben, come back into the room. Uh, we go to 3.3, which is the uh, Adelaide Central Market Tenants, and I look for a mover. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Reserve my right. Councillor Abraham today. No, thank you, Lord Mayor. Members? Councillor Martin. Um, look, this is the last time I'll mention it, Lord Mayor, but uh, this is just another illustration of how we're responding with a measure I can't explain uh, the cost of because uh, apparently it is confidential uh, and I wasn't aware of that. Um, but there is a cost to ratepayers and what is being proposed is a very uh, blunt tool to provide some stimulus to the central market. Now, I am a great supporter of the central market, and as you know, Lord Mayor, I am deeply concerned that the redevelopment of the central arcade, market arcade that Council is uh, uh, sponsoring is going to uh, wreak a great deal of damage on the central market. I support the central market and always will. However, this is going to support businesses which are both struggling and those which are thriving. And while I understand the need to support those who are struggling, which includes, for example, cafes which were closed today as a result of a government directive. It also supports businesses that are selling food, which are doing very well. Now, Councillor Canole is not in the room because he is one of those, and his businesses... I, Councillor Martin, I don't think you can talk to somebody else's business unless you have actually a part of that business. Well, I'm about to give you a, a personal observation, Lord Mayor, about when I was in the central market. I, think, and I, I don't think you can speak about another person's business unless you are across their finances. She can, he's declared. Well, I can, I can make personal observations, Lord Mayor, and I'm making the personal observation that some businesses in the central market arcade, including Councillor Canoles, um, and in the central market, including Councillor Canoles, are doing very well because they're selling food. Food is in great demand at this time. In fact, it is the subject of, of panic buying. Now, those Sorry, businesses... I, I can't hear you because of, the, because of the microphones. I feel it's a point of order. He doesn't actually know the cash flow of um, Councillor Canoles' business, so I don't think it's appropriate Correct. to talk on I've his actually, behalf. My, members? Councillor Martin, I think you can refrain from addressing someone else's business. Well, Thank you. I, I understand, Lord Mayor, and, and I'm not making any comment about Councillor Canole's cash flow and the number of people who are at the counter. I'm just simply observing there are people at the market patronising food businesses, in some cases, in a way that hasn't been seen for a very long time. You know, goodness me, uh, uh, in some parts of the city of Adelaide, lettuces are $7 each. Not at the central market, I add, Lord Mayor, but food is a very expensive sought-after commodity. At this time, we are proposing to offer rent-free tenancy to those businesses which are doing well. Now, in a month or two, they may not be. They may not be. And maybe that is the time to consider some assistance. But this motion doesn't allow us to target those who are particularly hard, hard hit, such as cafes, for whom closure may be longer than a month, two months, it may be six months. And yet here we're proposing three months for everyone. Th this is ill-considered. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, look, I'd just like to suggest to members that this um, suggestion that we ought to means test every single uh, policy lever that is brought about in a time of crisis uh, is highly misplaced. Um, you have to look at the big picture. Uh, means testing, uh, we are not talking about a policy that runs uh, for the duration of the term of council. Uh, we are talking about an immediate urgent measure 
given the extreme crisis that we are facing right now. Uh, it, means testing in this situation is absolutely not warranted. It will run absolutely counter uh, to any benefit that we might derive from the measure uh, to begin with. Pointing the gun barrel down at different businesses and saying, you're doing well, you're not doing well, it's, it makes a mockery of the very basis in which we're undertaking this proposal to begin with. So I do urge members uh, to, I do urge members to uh, to vote for this proposal as it is, uh, given the current circumstances. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Sims. Yeah, I, I agree with um, Councillor Kerr. The idea of <laughs> don't get used to it. <laughs> That's the, the idea of uh, <laughs> friendships. But the idea of introducing any sort of means testing with a payment like this is just totally unworkable and would actually take up more staff time as well at a time when the organisation is under huge pressure. Um, it's not the case that businesses are doing well at the moment. Um, I've seen the, the signs of, uh, of um, the reality uh, being in town the last few days. People are really struggling. Businesses are really, really struggling um, and um, quite frankly being devastated by what is happening. And um, I think we need to do what we can do to help. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Yes, um, as we very want to hear in this council by some members, extreme exaggeration and over, over hysterics. Nobody is suggesting, most of all, Councillor Martin, that we were going to means test every stall in the market. What Councillor Martin was saying, and I totally agree, is that the central market is open. It is now announcing it's opening on Sunday. It has not been closed by legislation and it is trading quite well. We have limited this to three months. It may be that they trade quite well for three months and then they crash. What happens then? We've got no money in the till. To say that we shouldn't make some value judgment as to who's trading well and who's trading badly, we just give it to everybody. We're not giving it to everybody. That's the whole point, Councillor Kerr. We're giving it to targeted people. And we might need to target Chinatown we might need to target our city cafes who have been ordered, not Chinatown, the cafes, all restaurants and coffee lounges have had to close for sit down business. Our central market has had no restrictions on it. And yet we're giving what must be, I can't even remember the figures, so I can't break confidentiality, but probably millions in the end. The same as uh, Councillor Martin said with our um, playing fields in the park lands. The, the Saints boys isn't discounting school fees for the next three months. They're still getting their income, and yet we're giving them the, our park lands for nothing. It's just silly. And at the end of three months, we can't borrow any more, Councillor Ho. We are well over our prudential limit and in trouble. And unless the new members of the council catch up quickly, we're going to end up in three Just months with a bankrupt council. A point of and clarification, not, Councillor Moran, we are not, we have not exceeded our prudential limit. We're pretty damn close. We have not, we have not exceeded our prudential if limit. If we borrow any money, we will be over our prudential limit. And that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. As one of the members of the audit committee, when I asked what a prudential limit was 20 years ago, he said something, Anne, that you should see far, far in the distance as a, a mere blur on the horizon. Well, that's not the case now. We are spending all our money. Of course, Councillor Kerr, we have to target. We have to give it to the people that's, that a business has actually closed. The central market hasn't closed. And as far as I can see, our private schools and our universities are still gathering their fees. And yet we're giving those two businesses, three businesses, uh, a huge free kick. It's silly. Deputy Lord Mayor. I would just say, Lord Mayor, that um, Councillor Martin mentioned the word patronising. Um, he was using it in a different sense, but I can tell you what is patronising um, is when people come in here and cast aspersions on others' businesses and assume that they're doing well, when it's very, very clear that a lot of businesses are not doing well. And I can tell you now, if councillors cared to walk around the central market and talk to the traders, they would actually know, they would know that this is not a new thing for them. The central market traders has been, have been suffering with the downturn caused by the coronavirus since uh, December and January. Since December and January, because obviously there are a large amount of people who have steered clear of Chinatown. So this relief, if anything, um, uh, is a little bit late. 
a lot of those traders are already down and now they're down even further. So to come in here and to make assumptions about businesses and, and what they're doing and how well they're doing or not doing, um, I think is ridiculous, especially when we've just heard that we apparently don't have enough information. But um, Lord Mayor, this is in line with what other large landlords are doing. This is in line um, with the messaging um, and the direction that all of our banks are taking. Um, and that's why the federal government has underwritten a lot of bank loans. It's all leading to this, this pinch point. All of that policy from banks, from federal governments and what have you is leading to this pinch point. And that is that um, landlords will give their tenants relief. It is a huge cost, input cost to doing business. Um, and it's one that we can uh, completely get rid of for the next three months. And that's exactly why we're doing it. And that's exactly why we should be doing it. Members. If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, we now go to 3.4, which is the waiving of the separate rate for the purpose of managing and marketing the Rundle Mall precinct for three months. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. And a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? No, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, thank you. Members. <laughs> no, I'll go to the mover to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, it takes us to 3.5. I think if someone would be happy to call um, Councillor Canole back. Uh, Councillor Kouros, second to Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, just to say that I think this um, partnering with Business SA is, is, a, is a particularly good and strong st strategic partnership. Um, I think it's exactly what should be done, and I'd hope this, um, uh, the relationships that are built out of this out of this time of crisis can actually can actually carry through, and we can have stronger ties with this very important um, uh, lobby group. Thank you. I will actually wait for Councillor Canole to return. Thank you, Councillor Canole. We're on um, 3.5, which is the Small Business Task Force. Um, are there any other speakers? If not, Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak to 3.5? If not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Councillor Kouros? Summed up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 3.6, making the city accessible by creating more flexible regarding the on-street parking. Councillor Kouros seconded Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? No, I don't know, ma'am. Councillor Abraham today. Members, Councillor Martin. A question for the administration, uh, Lord Mayor, to demonstrate that this is a considered proposal with clear measures to assist with flexibility. Um, could we have an illustration of one or two of the proposals? CEO. I'll invite Claire Mottler to come forward. Could you just clarify your question again, Councillor Mayor? I'm asking what we actually mean in practical terms as a measure or two measures about creating flexibility. Okay, what yes. are the concrete measures? Uh, through the presiding member. Um, one example, example could be um, allowing someone on a medical visit to a local hospital to either um, have a personal visit or visit a relative, um, experience um, an additional time on the street. That could be one example. Um, another example could be um, someone needing to stop in a residential parking zone to offload some um, vegetables or fruit for a resident living on the street. They don't have a residential parking permit, um, but we will be flexible. It's those types of things that we'll be looking uh, to ensure that there's still flexibility on the streets for people. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, we are then looking at making parking available, even though it may be restricted in front of hospitals and doctor surgeries and also in residential zones? Um, at this point, um, there is no intent to change any on-street parking signs. I see. And will this apply to the whole of the City of Adelaide, including North Adelaide? Yes, Councillor. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just uh, wish to say that this is an excellent provision. I think if people are going to be holed up in their homes, then they certainly do need 
as the deputy CEO highlighted, um, uh, the ability for people to come and, and drop off goods to them and what have you. I think it's also important as well um, uh, if there is if there is a, a, a fuller lockdown um, because people will need to have carers come to them. If schools do eventually close, people will need babysitters and other other care workers to come. Um, and help them take care of their families. So um, that's one of the most common complaints that I actually get in the city is that when carers come, they are unable to, to stay um, uh, close to, where, to the person they need to care for. Um, and so I think this is a very, very important measure and I commend the staff for bringing it through on their own, um, on their own authority. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. Yes, I also uh, want to speak in favour of the measure. Um, you know, members of council would know I'm usually a great advocate for public transport, but I recognise at the moment, for obvious reasons, um, a lot of people in our community um, don't want to take public transport um, because of the health risks associated with being in confined spaces at the moment. And I've heard of lots of people um, that are still working in workplaces that are operational in the city and getting to and from work is the cause of great anxiety for them at the moment if they're not taking the train or using the bus or the tram or, or the other modes of transport that they're used to. So I think this is a practical way that Council can help at this time. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, if there's no further speakers, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. That takes us to 3.7, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kouros, seconded. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just a question at this stage. Um, yeah. We're about to send out our rates notice um, for, the next, for the next quarter. Um, are we going to be including uh, advice on our rates hardship clauses in that? Through you, Lord Mayor. Claire Mockler, could you provide a response? Uh, through the presiding member, um, I think uh, that would be appropriate um, considering uh, the times that we're in. I would just say that there's probably um, some ratepayers um, who would have paid their full rates in advance um, back um, at the start of the financial year. Um, and so what we'll need to make, do, uh, make sure is that um, we somehow reach and communicate with those ratepayers who may well have already paid rates in terms of um, them understanding what, what we're doing more broadly. That would be the only um, caution. Not everyone will get the same information, but we could certainly you know, do various avenues. On, on that basis that you consider it to be appropriate, could I seek an undertaking that will publicise the rates hardship provisions in our rates notice and including in other digital um, notices as well? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Members? Councillor Martin? A question for the administration, Lord Mayor. Um, what are the criteria for a deferral of rates payment? Thanks, Claire. Uh, could the councillor repeat the question? The acoustics in here are really hard, and at the side it's really hard to hear. Could you please repeat your question? Um, what are the criteria for rates deferral? It's always been done on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, uh, but is it sufficient to say I'm having trouble yeah. meeting? That's yeah, sufficient? confidential. Um, so it's usually a confidential discussion. Uh, we do ask um, for some financial information um, to be shared with the staff. Um, so, yeah, it's case-by-case -case basis, though. I think it's, it's very similar to what the banks have put in place in terms of mortgage repayments. You contact the bank and you have a conversation around it. Uh, uh, well, look, I, I just want to uh, say that I'm very supportive of this. Um, this is a targeted initiative where individuals with difficulties in meeting their financial obligations, whether they're business rate payers or residential rate payers, um, will be able to um, uh, access hardship provisions or rates deferral. Um, I'm assuming, uh, and I emphasize again, this has only been in our hands for about an hour, so I, I'm not sure about all of the detail, but um, I'm assuming this means that we're going to be more considerate, more open to allowing people who are experiencing hardship 
uh, to defer those rates. And I welcome that, and I ask uh, the administration to be as compassionate as possible. And members, um, uh, what we'll do is also circulate the hardship policy, which has been in place for uh, quite a period of time. This is not a new policy. This is enacting the policy that's already in place, um, but it is incumbent on the person getting the rates to contact the uh, uh, relevant staff to talk through their individual case confidentially. Oh, I'm confused, Lord Mayor. If this is currently a policy, why are we voting to approve it? So, Sorry, I, I heard something too. I wasn't sure what it was. Sorry, Councillor Claire. Yeah. Thank you. There's already a provision within the Local Government Act um, to undertake this work, and it's something that we've done um, for many years. Oh, so this is business as usual. It's not a new initiative. What we're saying is that we're actually going to be more um, purposeful in how we um, provide that advice, making sure that we have appropriate staff in place, making sure that's properly resourced, um, making sure that we're um, promoting it. Um, it's those types of things at the moment. Um, it does go out on the rates notice um, and it does um, sit on our website. It's not easy to find. I had a look myself to find it. So um, we will be making sure that there's more visibility in the community that this is an option for people if they so wish to pursue it. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go down back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Uh, oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. My apologies, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I would just say uh, thank you to the Deputy CEO for that clarification. I certainly understood that facilitating access means just that. Um, that will be um, uh, more open uh, mm -hmm. about it and, and advertising it and letting people know that it is a live option to them, whereas previously they may not have needed it. Um, uh, now there will be lots of people that actually do need it. So that's also why I sought to have that undertaking that we could include it with the rates notice, because I think that's a very common sense uh, uh, approach to letting people know as they've got it in their hand, if they look at it and think, gosh, I can't pay that, I've got no money coming in, um, then they can they can read down the page and see that they can actually apply for this hardship um, and possible deferral of their rates. Thank you. Members, uh, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, 3.8, which is support for our city communities, which also includes our support for elderly and vulnerable people sleeping rough and our Aboriginal uh, communities. Uh, sorry, too many hands went up. Oh, my, I can't see my proverbial. <laughs> I think I had Councillor Sims and um, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a question for administration. Are they able to talk us through what some of those um, supports are going to be? Thank you, Councillor Sims. See you. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I think we'll have Claire back again. Sorry, Claire. <laughs> Um, yes, I certainly can, Councillor. Um, so the first priority is obviously um, the vulnerable and then elderly within our community. Um, so we um, have around 200 residents um, who are supported through our Commonwealth um, Home Care Programme. Um, today, um, volunteers and staff went out to check on them to make sure that they have what they need um, at the moment. Uh, we're also making sure we support um, the vulnerable people sleeping rough on the street. So we're working closely with um, our strategic partner, the Don Dunstan Foundation, um, and also SA Health to make sure um, that those um, people in our community are well supported. Um, and the third component that we focused on um, last week and this week is um, Aboriginal people in the community who may need to uh, return to the uh, country in the coming days and making sure that there's access to appropriate health care uh, to enable them to uh, travel if they wish. That has been the priority. Um, and then moving forward, uh, we'll look to start seeing how we can make sure that we're focusing on ways in which the um, well-being of the broader residential community um, can be supported. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy CEO, and um, I commend all those initiatives. Uh, Councillor Cross, did you wish to speak? Members? Councillor Donovan? 
just briefly, Lord Mayor, to say <clears throat> I think that it's good that we're keeping this really broad because we will become aware of more measures that are going to be needed as we move through this. So I think by giving this broad range um, of support for the community, we're uh, effectively enabling the administration to do what's needed as it's required. So I think it's great that this has come forward. I'm sure we'd all like to see all of those dot points of things that will be achieved within this. Um, but I know that administration is already across a lot of that and will continue to develop those strategies uh, as they become relevant. That's really Lord Mayor. We will continue to feedback with you um, the outcomes of the work we're doing. So keep you informed. Thank you, members. Uh, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. And the final 3.9, look for a mover. Thank Councillor Canole and a seconder. Councillor Kerra. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? Councillor Kerra. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, members, that brings us to the end of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, if there's, and there's no further business, I will call the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your attendance at such short notice.